Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen Restaurant Edition. I'm your host, Nicole Gaffney, and we're here today at Nordon Preferred Kitchen Equipment Studios. And joining me in the kitchen today is Chef Patrick Fury of Nectar and Dan Liu. Thanks for having me. Of course, it's always great to have you here. Thanks. What are we making today? It's a three-part recipe. They're all gonna come into one. We're gonna do a risotto with abalone nano rice, a particular rice from Italy. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna do a bear blanc, and then we're gonna do a seared scallop ceviche. Nice. Yeah. So it's going to go, and the uh, risotto itself is going to be a Meyer lemon, lemon thyme, so it's going to have a real mm. nice citrusy flavor. Love Meyer. Go really lemon. well with the ceviche. Great, let's get started. Awesome, okay. Um, all right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this uh, risotto going. All right. Now tell me about this, this rice that you're using. A uh, Valone Nano is small rice. It's from Valone, Italy, mm -hmm. and it's actually a little bit smaller than Canaroli, okay. and it really floats like when, you're, when you cook it. It mm. doesn't break down because it is the size of it is very small, mm -hmm. and then so that when you're making the risotto, really the key to a good risotto is like the rice is just floating and you get the yeah. texture. So we're going to start out with a little bit of olive oil. And a lot of people are they shy away from cooking with olive oil, but I think it's great. Oh yeah, it's definitely. So we're going to use some... And always, you know, get your pans up, cut, mm -hmm. cut down the cooking time. And these are great stoves here. The pans get hot really, really quick. They really are. This is a, yeah, this is a great stove. So we're going to just kind of, uh, I use the term sweat a lot, meaning mm -hmm. cooking without getting any color and mm -hmm. kind of making it transparent. And is this a lighter olive oil or it looks like extra virgin? It is an extra virgin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. So we're going to start with the onion, some chopped garlic. And the great thing about this is something, this is something that you can do with the risotto if you're having some friends over, family over there and you don't want to mm -hmm. like be cooking the entire time they're there, is the risotto, what we're going to do is we're going to get it going, bring it up and leave it on the side. And then what you're going to have, you're going to end up with is an actual cooked flaky rice right here. Oh, and yeah. then from there, we're going to turn that into a risotto. Mm. Hmm. That's interesting. A little, little bit of the okay. and, and it cooks without it breaking down so much. Right. Well. Mm. So then we're going to take we got the garlic, we got the um, onions, and then we're gonna throw the rice inside. Gotta love uh -huh. the smell of garlic and onion cooking together. <laughs> yeah. and we're gonna just, almost like you're doing a rice pilaf, we're gonna just coat the rice. I notice there's the a olive. lot of starch on that rice. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it has that dust on there. You don't wanna rinse that off ever. No. Mm -mm. no. Mm -mm. We're gonna take our white wine. I always use Chardonnay. Always use Chardonnay for well, anything, or just I like it. I like it for cooking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. Something oaked or no? No, uh, okay. more more like a French style. Mm -hmm. It's a nice clean flavor. Exactly. Let that lemon shine. Yep. This is an incredibly easy rice to work with because we're gonna let that come up to a boil. We're gonna hit. Uh, you get your um, like water or stock or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Get it up hot so you can get it in here. Bring it up to one one boil. We're gonna take it. We're gonna cover it, and we're just gonna leave it on the side and like That's let it, it sit. That's it. Wow. And then, in about. 20 minutes, it's it's just uh, rehydrates the rice, mm -hmm. and that's all you need, and then you're gonna end up with that product there. Oh, that's awesome. So no standing over the stove and stirring <laughs> exactly. ferociously. Exactly. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of salt, which I use, um, this is a, this is a molden salt from mm, France. Beautiful. Nice big flakes. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to yeah. work with. So as you see, this is a, comes up, and we're gonna go with the butter, and then we're just gonna just slightly cover mm -hmm. the rice. So you're not really working with any ratio, but more by sight? Yeah, you're just gonna like, as you go, you want it to be where you don't want it completely submerged, mm -hmm. but you just want it covered. And just like that, so you're gonna just see. It's it's almost um, like one to one. All right. Okay, just about there. So that's that's good, that's going. After you got that up to boil, <clears throat> you're gonna place it over here. And that's it. And that's it. We're wow. gonna cover it and just leave it. We're good. Very cool. Okay, so the next the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a bear blanc. So the bear blanc, we need to sneak back over here some ingredients. We have um, shallots. I have this is actually lemon thyme. Mm. We're gonna use that in reduction. We have um, white wine. It's beautiful thyme. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, so lemony too. Oh, is this something that's on the menu at Nectar? It is. Or? Yeah, it is. Tell me about Dan Lu also, your new project. Um, Dan Lu's downtown, 36th and Market. And from there, um, it's going to be craft beer, uh, like a nice. nice, fun, aggressive uh, um, beverage program. We're going to have uh, basically street food. I traveled through Asia, and Taiwan was one of the countries that I was really impressed with, with the night markets. And it's just kind of a social night market thing. Awesome. A lot of the dishes, they have a big, like, um, Japanese and 
Chinese influence hmm. with it. So it comes out with a really cool cuisine. So I really like that. So that's going to be kind of the cornerstone of the cuisine itself. There will be a little bit of um, Japanese influence, but it's basically going to be um, noodles. Um, we're going to have steam buns, we're going to have bomis, we're going to have awesome. some real fun. Oh, how okay. exciting. Yeah. And when will it be open? It should be open in the spring. Okay. Right now, yeah, we're just building that right now. Oh, we're looking forward to it. Stay tuned for more from Nordon Preferred Kitchen Equipment. Nordon, it's fantastic. There's a lot of space, high-tech equipment. The ovens are phenomenal. I can't wait to own one. We don't have to really sweat that incredibly. So this is our white wine. I, I don't even mind like raw, the raw shallots in there. Mm -hmm. A little bit of vinegar as well. What kind that. of vinegar do you use? I use champagne vinegar. Okay. Mm -hmm. So essentially, again, it's you know, Chardonnay grape yep. and Pinot. And once this reduces by half, we're going to add some cream. There. It's a really cool bottle. <laughs> it is, yeah. yeah Smiling Hill. Smiling but... Hill, is that yep. a local farm? Um, Smiling Hill is Maine. Maine? Yep. Ah. Mm -hmm. So while we're letting this reduce, um, we're going to put the cream in as soon as it's ready, and then we're going to start working on a little bit on the chabiche. Now, isn't your family from Maine, actually? I have uh, family in Portland, Maine. In Portland? It's actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Is that how you found out about the farm, Smiling Hills? The Smiling Hill? Hills? This is actually through Stephen. Ah, <laughs> our director. Yes, exactly. So, um, so this is a pretty fun, kind of fresh, uh, Nice ceviche. So we got tomatoes, we got um, chilies, um, jalapenos I use mm -hmm. actually, uh, scallions that are chopped fine, red onions, and then the tomatoes themselves are chopped real fine here. Everything's chopped really fine. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and then we have um, tomato juice, and I also use a clamato, so it's like a clam juice. Oh, with awesome. Tomato. Yeah. Put that in my Bloody Marys. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. So these are, uh, he's using vine ripe and uh, out of here, so these are actually from a hoop house. So we're going to take this and tomatoes. Now we're yeah. obviously not in the tomato season now, but you grow right. a lot outside of Abs the restaurant. Yeah, we do. In the season. Yeah. I'm pretty self-sufficient with all the tomatoes using um, the heirloom varieties outside. Oh, that's fantastic. I have fantastic. about 50 plants. Wow. And, all, and also all my herbs. It's a lot of maintenance. Sorry. And you have so all the right. herbs and you grow yeah. a lot of stuff back there. Yeah. So we got this, a little bit of tomato mm. juice. I want to just dip a chip right in there. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Here. Then um, the herbs I like to use cilantro and mint. Mm. Mint's really different in this. Yeah. Yeah. Mint. Mint brings out that little sweet flavor to it. Yeah. So I'm gonna just take it and rough chop it. Let me just check this real quick. Okay. Yeah. We actually go in. So it reduced by half. We're gonna go yeah. in with the cream. That go down. Oh, you can smell that mint the second you run your uh, knife through it. Yeah, this is. Yeah, the mint we grow outside, it's starting to get frosty a little bit. Yeah. We still have, like, actually, the lemon thyme is from the garden still. Yeah, we've had a, a really nice season for us gardeners. <laughs> know, it's been really warm. I know. And I'm, you, trying, I'm thinking about this morning, I was just thinking about, like, as it's, you know, this, all the um, herbs are getting frost and. Right. Um, and I was like, oh, I gotta get, I gotta get a hoop house, cover yeah. one of these gardens, because they're raised bed gardens. Right. They have five of them. So they keep a little, a little bit longer. Yeah. And you always cook with such great fresh ingredients, lots mm -hmm. of fresh herbs. Yeah, this dish actually itself is really fun and fresh. Okay, so we have this. Um, we'll hit it with a little bit of salt, and then with this molten salt, you know, I'll just kind of crush it as I right. use it. I love the texture that it brings, though. You get that one little crunchy piece exactly, of salt. Yeah. It kind of lights your mouth on fire in a good way. Yep. Okay. Now, that's good. We got our beurre blanc. So do you always add cream to a beurre blanc? Um, not always, particularly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I go straight in with this. This one I like to kind of just have it stabilizing. And mm -hmm. what we're using it for, for the risotto, is we're kind of making um, Almost like a sauce, a risotto and a sauce at the same time. So this hmm. works well with the risotto. Nice. What I'm going to start on simultaneously is actually the risotto. Now, when you see this as it's done, oh kinda, wow! And this just breaks apart, and that's going to be right in here. And basically, what I start out with the risotto is we're going to use just some a little bit of the water for this. So.
working with like hot stock when you're making um, uh, risottos is, is really key. It really speeds up mm -hmm. the process yeah. quite a bit. If you don't use a boiling or, or hot liquid, uh, does you're it? You're just gonna have to wait for it to come up. Okay, so yeah. it won't actually it's not, affect it. It's not gonna really time. affect it. It's just gonna take take more time. Yeah. yeah. Time is everything in the kitchen. Yeah. It's hot. So this is good here. We're gonna do a reverse real, real quick with these two. So that reduced a lot in a couple minutes. Oh yeah, yeah. The stove is, they is crank. awesome. Yeah. I think I'm gonna put this in my car. <laughs> I'll help it's you really, load it. Really, it's really good. Yeah. Now, when we're doing the bear blanc, we, we want to, you know, I'm like uh, driving it so that we reduce it. Um, but when we start doing the butter, I want to kind of bring it down to a simmer. All right. So we don't yeah. break it. Yeah. And the um, the cream itself actually stabilizes the butter That's as well. That's nice. Yeah. Anything so that, where that helps keep mm -hmm. the butter from breaking. It can be a yeah. tricky process. Yeah. I know this is on the menu over at Nectar. Would we find anything like this at Dan Liu or totally different? Totally more different. Yeah. yeah this is more like European techniques mm -hmm. last with, with a lot of different um, cultures yeah. getting it together. That's the fun thing about Nectar is like, you know, I, I use quite a bit of that. Um, but I'm really excited about some classics that are coming out of Asia. Awesome. Yeah, yeah we're really looking forward to trying it. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Stay tuned for more from the Chef's Kitchen Restaurant Edition. This is my first time at Nordon and it's been an absolutely incredible experience. The equipment is top notch from the induction burners to this, I mean the stove gave up off incredible heat but wasn't hot to me. This deck oven is beautiful, I mean a plancha, the variety of, of products that they have is incredible. You know we want the, um, I cube it up, you know, for, so it fits between the whisk. Mm -hmm. Do you want it to be relatively cold? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, you don't want it to be totally, totally soft mm -hmm. and you want them small enough so that they fit between the bands on the, uh, <laughs> And the whisk itself. So, so and this is that clump. Yep. And at the same time, this this butter is cooling down the liquid quite a bit, mm -hmm. which is okay. And you might want to just switch it back and forth to the to the burner if it gets too warm or cold. Either way. This is going to be a delicious sauce. I can tell. I mean, look at all that butter and cream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, with this, you're gonna we're not going to use quite as much of uh, cheese as I normally would in a risotto. All right. So it's because you got the dairy coming in a different way. I'm going to go back on the stove just because it cools it down. can even smell the butter. <laughs> if you do have some left over, you can refrigerate it. You're just going to have to start a new reduction of cream if you want to re-utilize mm. it sometimes. All right. so definitely don't want to throw it away. A little bit of salt. Now how about this kitchen here at Nordon? Isn't it fantastic? Oh my god, it's beautiful. I mean, there's so much equipment here that it's kind of like, I'm trying to think of things to utilize it. <laughs> like a kid in a candy store. Yeah, exactly. This and are you using place. some of this stuff over at Dan Liu? Yeah, we're, we're using, um, I have a kitchen designer and uh, they have a lot of the products that we want to use. Oh, so, fantastic. Yeah, you came to the right like place. That. Exactly, yeah. It was a really good spot. Okay, so that's good. We're good there. We're going to strain the Beurre Blanc once we get I'm back. Sure. Yeah, there's a... There we go, thank you. Drain all those good shallots on Nice there. and smooth. Mm-hmm. Mm. to the side. Now, when does the Meyer lemon come into play here? We're in the risotto itself. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, we're going to finish out the risotto, and then right after that, we're going to go right into the scallops. How was it? Just and cheese really good. Awesome. And then oh, so this is going right in. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's going to make it so rich and creamy. Mm -hmm. Wow. And again, like if it gets a little too thick. <laughs> or if you let yourself or on if you fire. Let it fire. <laughs> if it gets a little too thick, you can just go in with water. Okay. As well. <laughs> so I kind of really want it like a really almost soupy consistency. Mm -hmm. And so now we're going to do throw, this is lemon thyme. Mm -hmm. It smells so good. Mm, it really does. It's such a cool flavor. It is. It is. And it's very different from, you know, English time, regular time, Yeah, if you exactly. Will. So we'll get our Meyer lemons. Which are in season right now. Yeah. Meyer lemons are great. They have such a 
They're just, they're floral almost. Yes. Yeah, I love them. Yeah. Like when we have, uh, for oysters, I have stone crabs on the menu. Mm -hmm. um, I always pair nice. them with these. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you do a large selection of oysters? Nope, I usually just use one at a time. I use them um, mainly out of um, either out of Demoscata, Maine, um, mm -hmm. or I'll use them out of, um, Nova, um, out of New Brunswick, Canada. So all East Coast? All East Coast and North. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pretty much all of them come you know, above uh, Rhode Island. Oh, okay. okay. So we're good there. We're going to work on the scallops. killer. Yeah. So. so what is making this a, a ceviche? necessarily if you're searing the scallops. Yeah, we're searing it. Like in, in ceviche, you know, if you usually, some, a lot of times you'll poach them, mm. actually. And so instead of it, I think having a little texture on them yeah. makes it look a little bit more fun. Definitely. So we got these uh, mussels. By the way, mussels, these mussels, are, you should save these, put them in the freezer. A lot of flavor for rainy day. You can use them in sauces. You can caramelize them mm. like with mushrooms, shallots, and do a white wine reduction in there. You can make a great sauce out That's of these. That's good so. to know. Most people throw these away. Yep, no, you don't have to, so. And where do you get the scallops from? These are actually from uh, Viking Village mm -hmm. out of um, New Jersey. I love Viking yeah. Village. Mm -hmm. They're friends of mine. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. They are. So I use a, a particular uh, um, fish guru right out of there, mm -hmm. Tony McCarthy, and he's awesome. Very cool. So that looks like fun. And then we're going to season them really well. And Banana. just salt on these, no pepper? Just salt, yep. Okay. Stay tuned for more from Nordon Preferred Kitchen Equipment. Cooking in Nordon is one of the, my most favorite things that I get to do when I get invited to the show, just because the equipment is so fantastic and they pretty much have everything you could possibly dream of as a chef. And again, I always, I always work with really, really, real raw hot, because we kind of want these like to be um, rare inside? Yeah. You know, like seared outside, rare inside? So these wow, are you can in see that bottom starting to sear instantly. Yep. And does it matter what type of pan you use? I know you're using stainless. Um, I, you know what, I use either cast iron at home mm -hmm. or in the restaurant we have um, carbon steel. Okay. Which are out of France. So we want them nice and caramelized. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen a scallop sear so quickly. <laughs> And that's the thing, like you know, just having having a super hot pan. This this stove is also helping quite a bit. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, these are fun. Wow. These are good. Super quick. Yep. And you leave them whole. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'll use the like uh, the ten uh, twenties. Another good scallop for this dish is Nantucket. Mm. They have the those little, real little ones. They're mm -hmm. so, they're like candy. They are they're really so good. sweet. So it's good. That's going, that's doing well. Wow. And then we're going to come over and we're just going to, now this is, pull this right in. What a unique dish. How did you come up with this? Um, actually, I was talking to a friend of mine who's actually from uh, Guatemala. Really? And so I was like, I'm like, you know what? Because I, I was just thinking of like things at the same time, I'm like, lemon risotto would be really good. What would be really good with that? Scalps are great. But how can we make it a, one more, yeah. one more level of flavor on top of it? And then this kind of rounds out the. Um, the so parmesan. this is just a parmesan, yeah, Reggiano. Nice. And this is going to take it up a little bit from the cheese. So we'll go. Put that in there. This looks great. Rub your for good measure. Start the diet tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, Everything in moderation. Touch. Yep. So let's go over and plate. Oh, this looks great. So we'll do a little family style plating here. And you, and you really want it like nice and creamy like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, this smells incredible. And then these are going to go. This will be on the menu through spring? Yeah, I mean, it's really popular because mm, everybody who gets it, it comes back. And it's an entree, I imagine. It is, it is an entree. So you get, like, you know, these size scallops, you get about six or seven. It's a good portion. Think. Yeah. Looks fabulous. And I think, actually, you know, the, the juice on it as well rolls through the risotto. Mm. Awesome. There we go. 
We're ready to taste? Yeah. I can't wait. I think the only thing we need here is a little bit of white wine to help complement. <laughs> it's nice and cold, too. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Mm. Ooh, let's dig in. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that risotto is so rich. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of funny because the, the lemon makes it kind of light, mm -hmm. but it's, yeah. It's a really nice play of that sort mm -hmm. of acidity mm -hmm. right. and the rich scallop and that really creamy risotto. Mm -hmm. I was curious how this was all going to work together, right. but Thank it's you. beautiful. Thank you. Mm. Chef Fury, you never disappoint. Thank you. <laughs> I can't wait for Dan Lu to open, and we'll see you soon at Nectar. Thank you very much. Well, cheers. Cheers. Mm. cheers to your new restaurant. Thank you. Nordon is special because we have everything in-house under one roof. So when somebody sees a brochure, they come to Nordon, and Nordon brings it to life. The equipment is so fantastic, and they pretty much have everything you could possibly dream of as a chef. The typical Nordon customer comes to us for equipment expertise. The equipment is Top notch, the variety of products that they have is incredible. When you come here and I see four things that I want or need. If you need something in the Philadelphia, Delaware Valley area, Nordon is your number one choice. You won't be disappointed. Cooking in Nordon, uh, in the chef's kitchen, is, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's so much fun because, you know, I always learn something when I come here about some piece of equipment that's really incredible. And I think I'm going to take that stuff home with me. <laughs> It just drives creativity. It's so much fun to work.